guys, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna be checking out a 20 volt battery operated sprayer, which is intriguing to me because I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, and it came at a good time because I'm dealing with a couple of issues out in the garden on my super tunias in particular. I noticed this last week that a lot of them have aphids and then there's a little bit of budworm damage starting to appear again. So I've got to get on top of that before it becomes a big problem. So I'll be showing you what I'm gonna use to combat both of those issues in a minute because I plan on using this sprayer to go out and spray. Um, so first off, I want to go over this whole thing. Um, a company by the name of Ucoke sent it out. I think it's pronounced Ucoke. It's U-K-O-K-E. And I wish all companies had names that we could all pronounce easily. Um, but Aaron actually unboxed this and messed with it a little bit. And today's my first time actually trying it out. So this is a reservoir right here. It's made of like kind of a thicker plastic, like most other typical sprayers. Nothing really new or different there. Um, you can see the indicator here. You can see like half gallon, gallon, and some numbers in between. So uh, did I say it holds a gallon of liquid? I think I said that, I'm not sure. Um, and then right here, it looks like there's a measuring cup. Yeah, so there's milliliters on one side and ounces on the other side. You can see that right there. So that's kind of nice to have something, you know, handy that's attached to your sprayer to measure with, because that's always something that I run into. We order these little um, plastic cups um, on Amazon. They're like clear solo cups, but they have ounce indicators on them. And we just have a big stack of them in our garage. So we can take one and use it for whatever we're um, measuring. So it's kind of nice though, that you've got something attached to your sprayer. Um, and then this is where you put the hose or faucet in to fill up the reservoir. Um, so that's pretty much it for the bottom, other than the top here latches onto it. So the tube that feeds the liquid up goes in this little hole. Looks like it feeds over that. And then we use our latches on either side. So it stays together. Those are fairly straightforward, easy to use. Um, and then in the back here, you can see the battery opening. So like I said, this is a 20 volt battery right here. There is a charge indicator. So you just push that button. You can see where your charge is. This one currently has a full charge and I did see that you're supposed to get up to a two hour usage off of one battery charge, which is pretty amazing. If you have more than two hours of spraying to do, I feel sorry for you. That's a lot of spraying. Um, so it just goes in the back like that. To charge your battery, this is the charger here, which I mean, it's kind of nice. It's small, so you can just tuck it in, but you can't mount it anywhere. Like with our other DeWalt tools that we've got in the barn, we've got several battery mounts um, where we can just put our batteries in and they're just right there. Um, so, I mean, it's good and bad uh, that it's small. And then there is a, what is this called? Shoulder strap. <laughs> Shoulder strap that goes, looks like right here and right here. I just wanna throw this on because I'm not sure that I, that would be comfortable. Ooh, I gotta make it a lot bigger. So, oh, smaller. <laughs> I should have taken this out first. Okay, so you wear it like that. That's not bad. I mean, one gallon isn't super bad. I have a backpack sprayer that holds four gallons and that thing about topples me backward. Um, so if you need to use this like some extra assistance so that you don't have to carry it, I mean, that's handy to have that. So there's our on off button right there. I'm not gonna touch that yet until I get some liquid in there. Um, but the handle, this is like a kind of a rubbery material and then we've got plastic, but all of this, like the wand is metal and then there's brass fittings, which last a lot longer than plastic. So I was happy to see that. You can adjust this tip to be more like of a pointed spray or more of a fan, um, which is typical of all sprayers. You can usually do that. Um, with them. So I think the next thing we need to do is just get some water in here and just try it out and see what happens. Can you take this off when it's, oh yeah. So you can take this off and fill it without taking the whole top off. Okay. Okay, I think I wanna try it out over here because I'm hoping we can see the spray pattern on the gravel. Um, first off, I do wanna check on this lever. I wanna make sure, yeah. So check this out. So not only you can hold it down with your thumb the whole time if you want to, or you can hold it down and push it forward like that. So it holds it down for you. And if you've got a lot of area to spray, like I really do have quite a number of super tunias that are in a very congested space. Um, it's nice to not have to hold the lever down the whole time because it does get actually a little bit tiring for your hand. So happy to see that. So I'm gonna start with this all the way 
tightened up the tip there. Okay, taking a second to rev up. There, you can see it's got a pretty wide spray range right there. And I wanna see how much is coming out. Yeah, quite a bit of liquid's coming out there. Okay, so now let's loosen the tip so we get more of a controlled spray. Oh yeah, check that out. So for like the insecticide that I'm spraying today, I like to have the capability of like a wider mist fan spray because I want to cover a lot of area. Um, but for weed spraying, so if I'm using like burnout in this um, hopper, I like to be able to just hit the weed and the weed alone. I don't want a big mist of uh, burnout going and accidentally misting onto plants that I don't want to kill. So that is the sprayer. I don't think I'm missing anything. Um, you know, at this point, I like it because I don't have to pump it, which I'll, most of my other sprayers, my backpack sprayer, I either have to pump it with a lever right here or I have to stop and pump it this way. To not have to do that is really nice. I think two hours is plenty of time to get whatever job you need to get done, done. Um, but time will tell. Um, we'll try it today. So let's go back up here and I'll show you the sprays that I'm gonna mix up in here. Okay, so I've got two different things up here which I have talked to you guys about before. This one right here is called Thuricide. The active ingredient is called BT or Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a bacteria that can be found in the soil. It's natural. It does not hurt honeybees. What it does is it um, targets our budworms. Uh, and so, you know, it just works really well for that. This spray, however, does not handle aphids. So I have to use something else that handles aphids. And I'm using a pyrethrin base spray, which is also a natural. Um, and this one also takes care of some other things as well, but this one doesn't take care of budworms. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to mix both of these in the same hopper so I can kill two birds with one stone um, and get the job done all at once. Oh, I don't need to do this. <laughs> So I'm so used to, so used to having to having to take a top off of something, and I can just do this right here. So in terms of mixing a couple of different things in the same hopper, I've done it for a very very long time. Um, definitely, if you're not familiar with what you're spraying, don't do that. Um, and just use one at a time. Um, also, when you're spraying stuff, you want to make sure you're using it at the proper time. Um, so like today, uh, I'm gonna be spraying at dusk after the honeybees have gone away for the evening because while the BT doesn't hurt honeybees, the pyrethrin um, may. So we wanna make sure that we're spraying at a time that may not, that won't hurt honeybees. And I'm very, I'm spraying very controlled areas. I'm not like broadcasting it over my whole garden. So the whole thing is just, you know, use natural organic stuff as much as possible um, and then just use it responsibly and if you're not sure ask somebody do some research before you use it okay so for the BT I'm going to be using a little over an ounce and it is green pour that into the reservoir and then my pyrethrins I can't remember I gotta look so one ounce of each of them and this one is clear Okay, and now we're gonna fill it to the gallon mark, which is right here. I'm gonna kind of rinse this out though first. I can see that maybe the only drawback for me personally with this sprayer is that it doesn't have a bigger reservoir. Um, for most, you know, city-sized lots or smaller gardens, this would probably be plenty. For me, it might be, a, like I might have to fill it a couple, three, four times to get the job done. I'm gonna put the cap back on of everything. Now we can go spray. Okay, so this container is full of super bells and I did notice that a lot of my super bells have aphids as well as the super tunias out in my garden. Um, and the first thing that I usually notice is the foliage starts to look a little shiny. And the shininess is a secretion that the aphids leave behind as they're moving around, which is kind of gross. Um, but then usually if I see that shininess and start inspecting the plant like up close, you can see aphids. I mean, just small, soft bodied. They're either usually green or um, some are brown or kind of a blackish color. They're fairly easy to take um, control of, um, but you do wanna get on it before it becomes a huge problem. So the goal for this to spray, and it's not dusk yet, so I'm just gonna show you on this one container and then I'll go out and spray everything else later on. Um, I want to spray overhead. I wanna do from underneath and then I also wanna stick my wand in there and make sure I get as full of coverage as I can because those aphids, especially on small leaved little things like this, they just get everywhere. Um, so you wanna make sure that you just cover everything really well. So uh, let me turn this on. 
and I've got it on the mist setting so it covers more area. And I'll stick my wand in underneath. Okay, that one is done. Um, so like I said, I'll go out later tonight and spray the rest of my stuff when it's a little bit more safe and honeybees are not, not out. Um, as far as budworms go, we've done a couple of videos showing you what budworm damage looks like, a little bit more detail about that. So we'll try to remember to link those down below. But basically, if you start seeing holes through the um, blooms of your petunias or superbells, that's typically budworm damage. Um, they are also easy to take control of and take care of if you get on it and um, you either spray preventatively or you get on it with BT right away and take care of them so that they don't keep on eating through your plants because all of a sudden you'll notice your supertunias have no blooms on them. And it takes them a while to rebound. And when you're only, you know, you're planting these things for just such a short season, you want them to have color all throughout the whole season. You don't want aphids or budworms, you know, making your plants stressed um, so they don't bloom as well. Otherwise, it's kind of like, what, what's the point of planting your annuals? So anyway, I hope that was helpful just to see those couple of things that I'm dealing with in the garden. As far as the sprayer goes, I feel like this is um, pretty nice. I mean, it would be nicer if the reservoir was a little bit bigger, but I think it's really great for kind of a normal sized garden. Um, so I'm really looking forward to kind of putting it through its paces and seeing how it does here. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found this video interesting and we will see you in the next one. Bye.